Hi, this is Chad Curdy again. Uh, introduction to the National Electric Code 20, 2011. This is part three, and in part three, we're going to continue to talk about the table of contents. We covered the special occupancies and the special, special conditions, special occupancies, uh, and now we're going to move on into actually covering special conditions. We covered special occupancies, special equipment, and now we're moving into chapter seven, special conditions. Very important topics in special conditions to pay attention to is emergency systems. Every building needs an emergency system, and also another very important topic Here's my emergency system, uh, the wiring methods, the power source, uh, separating of emergency lights from other lights, everything related to wiring them, powering them right into Article 700. Also, there is another system that's called legally required system by the authority having jurisdiction, state government, local government, or federal government require certain building to have a backup system just in case of emergency. You're going to find this information right into legally required system. Um, um, optional system, if we here at Dunwoody decided to back up our building with uh, two MEG generators, that will be optional system. It's not required by a government, it's not required by the building code, so that's going to be my optional system. Information how to wire the system, uh, emergency, uh, optional system, what type of uh, auto transfer switches, and so forth that you need for it. So that's, um, that, these are very important topic in the chapter 7. And I'm picking um, a few other topics here um, that's also equally important. Um, and I'm going to start with that topic, um, newly introduced topic, the CUP system. This is after um, certain actions that we have. There is a very important topic that we introduce, a critical operation power system. These are building that need very good attention, a big attention and a big system as in redundancy for the power, redundancy for the light, redundancy for the emergency system. So brand new system, um, advanced though. Uh, the most important topic too, if you're doing PLCs with us here at Dunwoody, if you're doing PLCs, if you're doing control, uh, Article 725 will cover Class 1, Class 2, and Class 3 circuits. These are control and signaling circuits, power limited control and signaling circuits. A requirement for them, what type of insulation? Can you put them with power lighting and, 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 and HVAC equipment? Very, very important topics. Um, another important topic is fire alarm system. We talk about fire alarm system, um, fire alarm system, the wiring methods, how do you install them, what type of conduits in a plenum system, what type of cable do you need in a plenum system, a riser, and so forth. So that's another topic, very important, uh, non-power limited fire alarm system, power limited fire alarm system. So uh, non-power limited fire alarm system, power limited fire alarm system, how do we do all this, the, this good stuff? So these are very important topic in chapter seven, uh, the, mo the most important topics. Um, there's a few other things, but uh, so we have the fire alarm system, optical, not a big deal. Then that will move us from um, special conditions into chapter eight. Chapter eight is addition to the National Electric Code. Chapter eight is mostly communication, uh, voice, audio, video communication. So you'll talk if you're doing uh, phone, uh, TV, all this information is going to be right into article chapter eight, basically. Communication circuits, requirement for them, separation from any other power, unlighting and HVAC equipment circuits and so forth. Um, so that's, that's one topic, uh, um, very important for our power limited technicians. If you, if you are to install, a, you be a power limited technician, you have to be very aware of these articles. I'm going to go Mac. And then um, a couple of other articles, radio, television, equipment, two article about them, um, community antennas, um, internet, network, power, broadband, communication system. How do you install these systems? And finally, in 2011, they came, with, um, they came with an article, a brand new article that says premises powered broadband communication system. Premises powered broadband communication system. If you have a network at your home, now we have a complete article that covers all the wiring systems for that particular network um, at your house. So that's brand new in 2011, 2011, um, 2011 NEC code book. Okay, so that's basically an overview of the NEC code book. I'm going to go to chapter 9. Chapter 9 is very important. It's part um, of the NEC code book as referenced, and it has a lot of articles, a lot of um, uh, tables that's extremely important to size the conduit and so forth. So I'm going to go zoom straight into a couple of tables here. 
And um, so it, chapter 8, as I said, has tables that you need to be aware of. For example, percent, how do you fill um, uh, the percentage that you can fill of a conduit? Three-quarter of an inch conduit, you can only fill 40% of it. This means the 60% is sitting there empty. Uh, because of heat and dissipation and, 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 the, and the ease of installation. Uh, bending radius, if you have a, a six inch rigid metal conduit steel, um, what's the smallest radius that you can bend? You're gonna find it right in here. Um, uh, uh, table four and five, very important. This will help us size, size conduits. Conduits, how do you size conduits based on branch circuits, based on feeders, based on service entrance conductors? Different insulation, different sizes. Uh, if I have, for example, I can put 16 number 12 TH chunk conductor in a three quarter of an inch EMT conduit. How do I know that I can do that? You're gonna go do calculation if there are different sizes, different insulation directly from chapter four and chapter five. Um, there's a few things about compact conductor, specially designed conductor. Uh, table eight, table eight is very important when it comes to uh, voltage drop. We use it a lot in voltage drop. Um, uh, we use a lot of, of table eight and table nine for AC and DC voltage drop calculation to find the resistance and the impedance of the circuit to size the conductor based on the length. How far can I push a 100 amp panel away from the source and at the same time still continue to meet the code uh, recommendation of 3% voltage drop, 3% voltage drop. So these are, these are basically the tables at the end of the code, very important tables. And moving on to, um, a couple of other less important tables, but nevertheless, if you're in a control system, these tables are very important to know, class one, the limitation of the power and the limitation of the voltage in a class two and a class three circuits. How much current and voltage and power can I get from a class two and class three circuits or power limited um, the fire alarm system? You're gonna find it in these tables, in these tables. Uh, moving on into annexes, um, let's go over here to Annex. Okay, Annex um, D examples and a couple of, uh, okay, Annex A, B. So 11A, B, these are my annexes. Informative Annex D, E, and there's a couple of examples here, not that important, but it's really interesting to have Annex D and E and C and um, very important examples in these one, informative only, for example, there's really nice examples of calculation in Annex D, how to calculate a feeder for a, a residential or a commercial building. That's extremely, extremely important. There's also Annex C that you can find how many, if the conductor is all the same size and the same uh, insulation, how many conductors uh, TW you can fit in a five inch rigid metal conduit. Very important in Annex C. So that will wrap up the table of contents, the table of contents for um, the NEC code 2011. Um, just a quick overview of it. Um, a very important topic also, as you work on, let me go back here. I wanna go all these committees, 21, some committees that you can join, but we're gonna go into chapter eight. There you go. Introduction, chapter nine. Um, a couple of things, guys, as you use the NEC code book, the index at the end of the NEC code books come very handy. For example, if you wanna know where do I need a GFCI receptacle um, in the code all over, not just residential. It's really nice to go to the index and find GFC um, under the index and that will tell you where the word GFCI is listed all over in the NEC code book. So you can find that if you have a fountain, a fountain, um, you, you need a GFCI receptacle for it. So index is very important. Moving on into article number, um, article 90. Article 90 is extremely important because it tells you what uh, which location um, need the, the NEC code book apply to it and which location does not. Um, and I'm gonna just highlight a few things here, very important as the NEC code is men, meant for the practical safeguarding, safe the people and the, and the equipment, not, to, not as a design manual. That's what the NEC code book, um, and if also has the restrictions 
There is, um, is the NEC code adequate for a future expansion? The answer is usually no. You have to go, the NEC code book, guys, is we always say the NEC book is, is the reference point, the zero point. So you gauge yourself how good your installation or your design is, how high you can go above the NEC code book. So these are very important things. What's covered and what's not covered, guys? Generally speaking, these are where you're gonna find what's covered. Generally speaking, everything is covered except utilities. So if you have electrical utilities, if you have low voltage utilities, these are not gonna be covered. Mining is not covered. So this is where you can find what installation not covered in the NEC code book. Um, automobile, um, 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 aircraft, uh, ships, all these are not covered by the NEC code book. So, and what's covered and what's not covered, this is gonna be right directly from, uh, from this article. Obviously what's covered is everything, what's not covered is mostly utilities and automobiles and ships and so forth. So, uh, legally acquired uh, and a couple of things. Enforcement, there's a very important enforcement who enforces NEC code book, the authority having jurisdiction, the government that we elect on the local level or the state level. Uh, rules, mandatory rules, permissive rules, and explanatory rules. In the NEC code book, as you go through, there are certain things that start with shall. You must do it. Um, permissive, shall be permitted. It's up to you to do it. It's a good idea, but it's not up to you. Um, explanatory material, like voltage drop, is, is 3%. It's, it's explanatory material. It's, you don't have to do it. So these are very important rules between mandatory shall, permissive shall be permitted, and explanatory. It's up to you to do what you want to do. It's up to you to do what you want to do. And that will, um, that's really the introduction. Um, permissive, wiring planning, um, formative annexes, and units. So there's a few things, uh, units that we use in the NEC code book, the international units as well as the in formative annexes, in 2011, they added the um, non-mandatory information relative to the use of an EC code is provided in informative annexes. They just made the annexes at the end. They say informative. It's up to you to adhere to it, but you really don't need to. You don't, really don't need to. So you guys don't have to worry about that one. Um, so that's, that's basically compliance and so forth. So this is basically an introduction. The most important things in the introduction is really is what applies and what's not apply and why do we have the code? We have the code to safeguard the people and the equipment from the hazard engaged um, or, uh, or caused by the electrical uh, systems, by, by having electrical system. So that's, that's basically, there's a layout of the NEC code book here that's really nice, I thought, um, at the beginning, give you that the four chapters, the four chapters are the core, the bread and the butter of the NEC code book, these four chapters over here, and then everything else is special occupancy, special equipment, special conditions as we talked about, and then table of contents and communication is listed as communication only, and table of contents are applied as referenced, applied as referenced. Um, uh, chapter, I mean, chapter nine, tables in chapter nine are applied as referenced. Applied as a reference.